coaching for MMA UK, joined via Skype by Aidan Stephen. Um, obviously, Aidan's got a big fight coming up this Saturday, Cage Warriors 105 against Steve Amiable. So, uh, th- obviously, thanks for jumping on, mate. We always appreciate your time. Pleasure. <laughs> and uh, so, basically, it's going into fight week tomorrow. Uh, all the uh, all the hard work's done. How's how's preparation been going for this one? It's been great. It's been a good camp. Uh, everything's gone according to plan. So, can't wait. Fighting on a Friday instead of a Saturday for a change. So, we'll see yeah. how that goes. <laughs> yeah, a wee bit of a change. I guess uh, the other thing as well is you've been. Since signing with the promotion, you've been pretty active. So this will be the third fight in what five less than months. six months, but less five than five. Months, yeah. Is that has that helped you as a fighter as well? Almost because I mean, effectively, you're not out of camp, really, are you? Yeah, I've, I've not really thought about it to be honest. Um, a lot of the time, uh, I, I would keep this active all the time if I could. But a lot of the time, it was just um, you know getting matched and finding opponents, and you know I would have had to travel. To get matched a lot of the time, so mm-hmm. um, now that I've actually got a platform, it's, it's a lot easier to get fights. And you know, as soon as this fight's over and done with, I've got a holiday. I'm taking a wee, me and the missus are taking a wee lad away for his second birthday to Spain. Mm-hmm. And uh, as soon as that's over and done, we straight back to training and see what's next. Yeah, it's one of the things I was going to ask you about is obviously signing with a, a promotion like Cage Warriors. Whereas you know, in the regional scene, uh, regional scene, not just in Scotland, I'm assuming everywhere, that sometimes you do have those big spells between fights where you struggle to get matched. Has that been a big benefit with going to Cage Warriors? Yeah, definitely. Um, not even just getting matched, just a, a bigger platform to, mm-hmm. you know, show show what I can do. And yeah, it's been it's been a it's been a really good move for my career so far. And you know, we'll see what happens after this fight. Yeah, and just not not to just to look back on the fights you've had. Um, so obviously two fights, two victories, one finish, one decision. Um, fought some really good guys. Um, how how has that been for you getting in there against guys at the level of like Chris Edwards and stuff like that, and and getting the victories? That must surely boost your confidence as well. Yeah, a bit disappointed to not get the finish in the last fight mm. because um, you know I'm not a fan of decisions, and if, unless it's a a really dominant decision. But, you know, uh, it, it was a really tough fight, the last one, actually. So, um, yeah, uh, to be honest, it's, I've not really thought about it in terms of a step up in class. Mm. Because I've, all, I've, I've always, in my head, thought I was there. But, um, yeah, I, so I suppose I've never really thought about it. Just, it's good to know that I can hang with these guys and, you know, beat them as well. So, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this fight. I really like Stephen Amiville as a fighter. He's... You know, he's not really got much weak points, does he? He's, mm-hmm. he's, um, he's fought some of the top guys as well and, you know, he's beat some of them. So, yeah, it's all systems go. And, and I guess uh, he'll be almost the same as you. He's coming out of the fight in a good win streak. I believe his last loss was to actually Paul McBain. Uh, yeah. He's in a three-fight win streak. So, I mean, both these are going to come in, come in there uh, confident. Um, what, what are you expecting from Steve in the fight? To be honest, um, watching all his fights, he he does mainly the same thing in every fight. He pressures. Uh, he's you know he's got good at covering range with that with his uh, straights. He's more, he tends to throw a lot of straights rather than hooks and uppercuts and that. Just it's just his style. And he makes it work for him. Uh, he's really good at, good at that. And then you know when he wants to change up with the wrestling, he's he's got good defensive wrestling as well as offensive wrestling. So. Um, I don't think anything he does is going to surprise me mm-hmm. um, because I know he can, he can take the fight anywhere whereas my last fight was against a striker and you know a striker with solid takedown defence so when I never got the fight to the floor I had to stand with him whereas I know that you know Steve will like to take the fight wherever he wants which which I prefer you know because I like to go wherever the fight goes as well rather than just keep a standing strike and match the whole fight do you feel good on against a guy like Steve as well, a guy who's pretty strong everywhere, anywhere it goes, as you're saying? Does it almost make you up your game as well? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, not even just in the fight, but training camp as well, you know. So, you know, every training camp gets harder. You're putting yourself through more each camp, but I've had a perfect camp and I can't wait for Friday. 
Come yeah, for Thursday to weigh in, actually, <laughs> and <laughs> get some food. So what's it been like with, having, with regards to the weight cut, as you bring it up there? Obviously, getting to fight so frequently, has that helped with the weight cut? Is your weight generally staying down a bit lower than it maybe it would if you were six months between a fight? Have you noticed a difference there? Um, I, I went a bit crazy after the last fight. Yeah. Because obviously it took about a month to get this fight matched or uh, to get an opponent. So um, I put on a little bit more than I normally do there. Because cause it was going on holiday um, the start of June, I wasn't expecting to get matched again. I wanted to get matched, but I just didn't think it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Because cause they're such a busy uh, company, busy promotion. But um, yeah, my, weight, my weight's basically the same for every fight. The only problem was uh, with this one was, like I said, I went a bit crazy with the food and drink. But um, it, it came down really fast. It came down a lot faster than I thought it would. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was actually lighter two weeks out from this fight than I was for the last one. So weight's, weight's never an issue, especially moving up a weight class as well. I don't have yeah. to worry about my weight anymore. And then, you know, I'm probably going to cut about two kilos this week and that'll be me on weight so it, it's kind of it's always a hot topic in MMA's uh, weight classes weight cutting stuff like that for you as a fighter not having to cut that weight how how be, how much better do you feel going into, the, going into the cage not having to cut a crazy amount of weight yeah it, it's, it's I still can't get my head around the whole weight can I, I nearly killed myself actually making uh, 135 the last time I actually missed weight by a pound I think I only got down to 137 and um, you know I, pr- I probably could have made it but I could like everything was switching off my whole body was going numb oh, it, was, it was horrible and I was thinking to myself I can't do this for the rest of my career I can't keep. Yeah. but um, and then when the fight came I remember the first round a few through ja- I can't even say it threw a few jabs and I remember thinking, fucking hell, this is so slow. You know, I mean, my punches were going in slow motion. I was like, I, you know, fair enough, I'm a bigger guy, but mm-hmm. I just can't perform the way I want to this way. And that was when I made the decision to move up a weight class. I've, I've got to say, having obviously met you in person, the fact you even got to 135 absolutely astounds me. I don't know how you were getting down to that, that weight. Um, <laughs> so you've definitely found your home now. There'll be no crazy cuts down to 135 no. again. Never again, never ever. It's like uh, Thomas Hepburn <laughs> fighting at featherweight. I just that's a that's crazy. That's a crazy dude right there. But, uh, yeah, it's whenever I see him, I was think oh, him fighting at featherweight is like the equivalent to me fighting at uh, bantamweight. I think Thomas has just got that frame. I don't know if you saw if Thomas uh, partook in some combat jiu-jitsu last night. Yeah, against Stevie Way last night. Yeah. I, yeah. ne- I never saw it, but I saw the result. I'd, I'd quite like to see the, the match itself, actually, because they're both like really solid, legitimate grapplers. That I've faced them both before, and they've both mm-hmm. given me problems. So I'd like to see how that one um, unfolded. I'm sure they'll. I'm sure they'll throw that one up at some point. The other thing I wanted to ask you as well about camp. I saw you've uh, have you you've done a few Sundays down in higher level. Have you been? Have you been yeah, level yeah. A few yeah. Things? How, how's that been? Man, the amount of talent in that match. It is unbelievable. Like, <laughs> there's no such thing as an, well, I'm saying easy spar, but you know, what I mean, none of the spars are easier than another. And um, to be honest, like the last few fights, I've not actually done that much sparring. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of like uh, picking up injuries and stuff before fights, but um, after the first time going down, um, I said I would definitely go down another time before the fight. So I managed to get one five weeks out, and then one three weeks out. Mm-hmm. I just want to get a lot of spar- sparring done with, you know, like Bungard, Ross Houston, and Chris Duncan mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But, um, you know, my work's been super busy just now. And uh, mm-hmm. they were only free on the Saturday. So the sun- I was only free on the Sunday, but then it made sense just to go down for Super Sunday. But um, another thing about that was, you know, like normally in terms of my sparring, it's against heavier guys. Mm-hmm. Whereas this time uh, I was actually sparring people in my own weight class. And that yeah. was a nice, nice. Uh, Nice change as well. Does that obviously sparring the heavier guys? I mean, I'm sure it's got its benefits, but sparring guys your own weight class, does that help you more with just sort of timing, the speed? Obviously, the lighter guys are going to be generally quicker than the heavier guys. Does it help in that sense? Um, I really 
I never really thought about it. Like sparring heavier guys has always helped me in terms of grappling, so that when it came mm-hmm. to grappling people, yeah, I always felt much stronger. And um, you know, it's, it's no secret everyone's seen my kind of fights. I like to mm-hmm. grind on the cage, and if I have to strike, I will. But you know, I like to just um, fight my fight and then get the fight to the floor and look for the submission. But um, after that last fight, I've got a bit more confidence in my stand up after. You know, watching it back and I've been working with a new striking coach for my last two fights as well uh, Andy Hitchcock he um, he's really just uh, made everything come together I feel so much more confident as well and then even going through a higher level you know um, rather than just trying to get the, uh, each spar to the floor I was quite happy to stand up and strike with these guys and you know surprise myself a wee bit as well so yeah I, sw- I suppose it like I said, I've never really thought about it, but sparring <laughs> the smaller guys definitely has its right. benefits. It's good as well because there is a lot of there's, there's a lot of maybe the, the wider audience wouldn't know, but there's a lot of talent about Scotland at the moment. It is dotted around right enough, so you do have to travel about to get to get different looks for like you say, like Chris Duncan, uh, Chris Bongard, and then higher level. But there's there's plenty of talent there, and it seems at the moment that everybody, almost everybody, uh, seems to be travelling and helping each other, which is which is good to see. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's, it's, I'm not, there's never been this much talent in Scotland before, and like it's it was normally like only the one or two gyms that was like producing mm-hmm. the talent. But now it's all the gyms. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's definitely a good thing, and, and I think that's reflected in when we look at Cage Warriors and the amount of Scottish guys now coming through Cage Warriors. Um, obviously, we've seen Scott Malone recently just fight for a title. Fought a very yeah. tough, tough guy in Jack Shore, did very well the first round, but didn't go his way. This fight, do, do you feel that this is, have you been thinking about this, has this got any title implica- implications, do you think, at all with the win streaks both yourself and Steve are on? Yeah, I, I said um, I said in an interview at the start of the year that I wanted the title shot for the end of the year. Mm-hmm. And I've, you know, I've, I've been saying, oh, I want to go for that title, but, you know, recently I've been thinking about it, you know, the, being champions cool and everything, but I, I just want to be having exciting fights against the best and just challenging myself. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I've, I've not really looked past Steve, Steve Amable. Yeah. But I can, I can see what the winner getting the title shot because of just like the way the landscape is just now. But mm-hmm. the only problem is with soaring back, pulling out of the, uh, the fight at, uh, at one oh six. Then I reckon they'll. Give, you know he'll be first in line for the title shot, even though he pulled out. You know he's he's the interim champion, but surely he's going to move back up to lightweight to defend his well, title there. That, oh wait, no, no, he's vacated, isn't it? Sorry. I just, well, actually, what's happened there um, is so obviously Soren won the lightweight belt. I find this situation rather strange, but I'll get your thoughts on it. So Soren won the lightweight belt, vacated, moved down, uh, then won the interim belt. But Soren's actually said he's moving back to one fifty five. Uh, because he doesn't oh, he? do the weight cut, so he he's effectively went back to lightweight where he was a champion. He'll now need to try and get that belt back. It was quite quite strange that whole scenario. So it's a uh, Mads Burnell, uh, obviously uh, Dean Truman, and then beyond that, I mean, yeah. I guess it's an opportunity for you or Steve uh, to go and put on a really good performance and, and and claim a shot at the belt. That's quite annoying. I never knew that because when I went on Friday, I was actually going to call out Sonnen back. Because uh, you know, just not not a fan, mm. and just um, I knew for a fact. Well, no, I didn't know that he'd uh, he's just going to move back up, but mm. I thought he was going to put the title picture on hold so that he could get a shot, even though he pulled out. Because as soon as uh, oh, I'm having a brain fart, who's the featherweight champion just now? Dean Truman. Keep as soon as as soon as he pulled out, Soren Bach started giving it big licks, saying, "Oh." I, I wouldn't want to fight me either. I I'd, I'd fake injuries, and then when he did get the fight, he went and pulled out. So I was like, yeah. "Fucking, what are you playing at?" Yeah, it's created a bit of a, created a bit of a mess. I mean, I understood from Soren's point of view, maybe winning the one fifty five and doing the the double champ thing that seems to be the end thing. But I found it strange to vacate a belt you've won because I mean, it's it's not easy to win a belt, especially a cage no. warriors belt. Um, but I believe Soren's out of the picture at one forty five. So I mean. I guess it opens things up for potentially you or Steve um, to go in there and, and put on a show and, and st- stake your claim to a shot at that belt uh, down the line. 
yeah, again, I, I think Dean Truman's a great champion. Mm-hmm. I, you know, he's just never in a boring fight. But yeah. same with me and Steve. You know, we like to make exciting fights. And yeah, it would make sense for the winner to get a title shot. But at the same time, it's, it's like I watched an interview with Chris Bungard the other day. And Bungard was saying, like, people saying, oh, if you're not in this sport to be champion, then there's no point in being here. And Bungard was saying, that's shite. You know, you should, you, you want to be here to put on good fights and just, mm-hmm. and, you know, I, I quite agree with him that way. I'm, you know, being champion would be cool, but, you know, like, look at Cerrone, you know, he's he's never been champion in the UFC, but he has some of the most exciting fights and, you know, he's a fan favourite and stuff like that. That's, that's more my ambition. It's, it's one of those things as well, I guess. I mean, if you're, if your sole focus is purely to be champion, no, everybody's going to reach that level. Mm-hmm. Um, no everybody's sure. going to make it there so then if your sole, sole purpose is to be that and you don't make it it kind of it would almost make what you've done pointless so I, I kind of agreed with what Chris said there I think uh, if you're good enough and you, your fights are exciting you tend to find good things come for that so yeah. uh, it's maybe best to focus there and making sure you're putting on entertainment fights and I guess winning obviously as well certainly helps your case yeah definitely uh, just quickly before we before I let you go, um, we documentary I saw uh, that was done on you. Really, mm-hmm. really enjoyed it. Um, it was it was a really good insight into your life. I learned some stuff that I didn't know. Um, obviously about your sister stuff like that. Um, can you tell me a wee bit about how that that came about and what your thoughts were on it on the final product when you got to see it? So me being me, the worst person in the world for remembering my sponsors. <laughs> I have a. Uh, picked up a new sponsor in uh, rashguards.org it's a company based in Aberdeen yeah. and one of the guys that uh, runs it is uh, he trains jiu-jitsu in Aberdeen and um, the, the guy that shot it as well Kyle Littlejohn, he also trains um, jiu-jitsu in Aberdeen mm-hmm. so uh, you know, them being friends and Kyle's, as you can see he's amazing at you know, these videos and stuff like that, I think uh, they're going to do a few pieces on um, different MMA fighters and, um, you know, it'll look good for their website and stuff like that. So yeah. um, they messaged me, they came to me with the idea and I was like, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's a shame though they never got a film at work because uh, I do fuck all at work anyway, but <laughs> I could have made it, could have made it look like I do something. <laughs> nah, I'm joking, but they, they never got a film me at work because like the, the paperwork and that had taken too long, but it turned out pretty good, I thought. Like a lot of the stuff that we did didn't matter, actually make the video in the end, but, you know, it, it just looked amazing. Yeah, it was it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good watch. Again, it was a nice insight, uh, insight into your life uh, as well. Uh, so for anybody that's not seen it, uh, jump on it. So I believe it's on your Facebook as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's just like my name into YouTube. It's the it's first video that comes up, yeah. Well, listen, uh, I won't take up too much more of your time. Um, oh, I'm doing obviously. fuck all anyway. <laughs> <laughs> fight, fight week's always so boring, you know, just sitting waiting so, around. So what is it, what, what, before I let you go then, what, what does the rest of the week look like for you? So it's Sunday now, you're fighting Friday, which is obviously a day before you would normally. So just talk us through the week's like, when do you travel down south? And Yeah, there was, so there was no uh, flights that would get me into Essex on Thursday for the weigh-in sometime. So I've got to go down a day early. But that's cool. That's uh, you know, the plan. The plan before the wait, the day before the weigh-in is always just to chill out anyway. So um, <clears throat> I did. I, I did for the last two, for the last three fights. Sorry, I've done like this certain water cut. It's just uh, on the Saturday. Yeah, so for like five days prior. So today I've had. What did what is today? Sunday. Sunday. No, so yeah. So yesterday I went high carbs. <laughs> which was awesome, a massive Domino's. Uh, high carbs, four litres of water. Today is medium carbs, high salt, uh, eight litres of water. So I'll do eight litres of water today, tomorrow and Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, I'll do six litres of water. And then you normally wake up about a kilo over on weigh-in day. So if I'm flying down there, you know what I mean? But like the last uh, two times I did it before, I ended up making weight a day early. Making weight a day early, sorry. So, um, We've just started a day late, and it, it works out fine. It worked out really well for the last thing. Mm-hmm. I, only had, I only had two kilos to cut that morning. But 
like I said, I'm a wee bit under this time, so I reckon it'll only be about one. And that's just a 10 minute bath. Yeah. 10 minute cocoon sorted. So fly down on Wednesday. Tomorrow, tomorrow um, I'll go into the gym, got a couple of light sessions, just got a good sweat on. Uh, I'm working tomorrow and Tuesday as well. So we'll work throughout the day and then go train and then chill out with the family or at night time. So on Wednesday, yeah, we'll get through flights at seven in the morning, chill out in uh, well, Essex for the for the day, and then Thursday we'll weigh in, and then yeah. again just chill out and then fight on Friday. It's on the main card this time as well. Aye. So um, I know. I think you're. I, I might be wrong, but I think from what I've seen, you're about third. Third. Uh, well, you'll be it'll be the main event, co-main event, and you're just before the co-main. Is that is that right? I haven't been told yet, but. Um, I've, I've, been, I've seen that I'm on the main card so yeah. and the main card kicks off at 9 which you know the last two fights being on the prelims was great because I like to fight early and then just chill out right. you know, but I sit and wait around the whole night <laughs> <laughs> just give you more time to stew yeah but like, like I said it's, you know, it's part of the game right. and then on Saturday I haven't told my girlfriend about this yet but me and my friend might be shooting down Tamfield to watch the Champions League final Ah, that's I'm forgetting about the Champions League final. It's the uh, next night. <laughs> it's gonna be some weekend. How how much weight did you lose watching that second Champions League final? That what you must have you must have lost a few pounds sweating it out watching that. Oh man, uh, I woke I woke the wee boy up. He was fast asleep, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I even went upstairs to watch it and screaming, running around the house, and yeah, woke him up. I wasn't a, I wasn't a fan favourite that night, but. <laughs> I think, oh man, it's magic. Massive Ideal scenario is you, you beat Steve Amiable and then Liverpool win the Champions League and you come and back then, up home and have a have a good holiday. And then go to Spain on Thursday. Oh man. Perfect. Some life. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I, I'm hoping all, all the boxes tick for you. Um, before I let you go, let's test that memory. You any sponsors you want to mention? Fuck's sake, I wrote, I, wrote, I wrote them down, but I've left the sheet downstairs. Just want to say, um, this for the, this uh, fight camp, it's the first time I've ever done a, had a like nutritionist helping me out, Selena Hitchcock. She's, um, she's you know what I mean, we made weight really easy this time round, yeah. thanks to her. So, um, massive shout out to her. Again, to Andy, he, um, my striking coach, who's also a tattoo artist, custom ink, <laughs> check him out. Um Kev McLoon at Murray Sports Massage, you know, he's he's up to his years and clients just now, so I don't think he needs any more. <laughs> if anyone's got a, anyone's got any problems, give him a shout. Um oh, fuck. Why why does this happen to me every time? It's good though, because everyone knows it's coming at the end and they all right. watch. Uh, honestly can't think. Well, I suppose you you, you forgot your paper with your sponsors, but at least you charge your phone this time. <laughs> Oh man, how bad was that? And like, and all the boys at the gym were like, I walked into the gym the next day, and they were all just shaking their heads, just like that is the most Aiden thing you've done. Just... Well, at least you you got some of the sponsors out. Um, when we release the video, you can fire the rest in the comments. Oh man, A one fight gear. By the way, they sent me a care package this week. Um, MMA gloves, boxing gloves, you know, sparring gloves, t shirt and shorts. You know, I'll be wearing them. Yeah. I'll be wearing my. A1 fight t-shirt um, fight week um, or down at the Wayans and stuff like that who else Sunsup how can I forget them they, they are like my main sponsor because they provide all my supplements and nutrients and stuff like that so um, yeah. but yeah yes. um, yes. Ang- Angry Barber will be getting my haircut tomorrow <laughs> for the fight um, just beat this food sauce um <laughs> I'm oh, enjoying it. Sure I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy it. Oh man, this is this. No. <laughs> um. Ah, sorry guys. I've been punched in the head too much. I can't think. Well, you got, you got as much as you could, and, and I'll be honest, it was quite enjoyable for me. So, um, for for everybody watching this, um, tune in on Friday. Uh, Cage Warriors 105, Aidan will be fighting Steve Amiable, um, and it looks like it's going to be a cracking fight. So, as always, thanks for joining us, Aidan, mate. Yeah, man. Until next time. Until next time.